In today's video, we're going to be covering DDoS. Now, let's start by seeing what it is and the acronyms itself. So, uh, DOS, part of DDoS, is a denial of service, and a DDoS is a distributed denial of service. Very similar, yet slightly different. So, denial of service, as you can see, is the ultimate goal here. But what is a denial of service, right? So let's say you're trying to connect to uh, Facebook.com and it's not working, right? It's down for some reason. You can't connect to it or you can't connect to your favorite game servers. And it might just be that the servers are down. But if there's a malicious actor, usually what they're trying to do is called a denial of service, meaning you can't connect as a legitimate user you're not able to connect to it, which is denying you the service. All right, pretty basic there. Uh, distributed just means that it's much larger and spread across multiple computers. So one way to think of it is kind of like, um, let's just say you're trying to get on a major highway, right? And you know, usually you take this route all the time, whatever. It's normally not busy, but you're trying to get on and all of a sudden there's a traffic jam. And there's way more cars than there usually is, and it's really slow, and sometimes it's complete stoppage of traffic, and you can't get anywhere. You're not getting to your destination and back. You're not getting to what you need to be doing, and it kind of prevents the drivers from getting their destination. That's kind of one way to think about what a denial of service is like for the end user. Um, and, you know, the basic goal is either overload the victim's network or server, uh, but the really idea is you want to prevent, it's preventing legitimate users from using the service. Uh, usually, uh, in a distributed denial of service, usually it's accomplished through a botnet, uh, because then it's a lot harder to trace back to a certain individual or certain group to, that it would be committing these crimes. Uh, so, DDoS techs usually use many, 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 many computers, depending on the type. We'll go over those in a minute. Uh, it can be pretty much anything connected to the internet, from a smart toaster, to a smart light switch, to a smart fan. Any of the internet of things, if they're not regularly updated with latest firmware and uh, networking protocols, they can be very, very susceptible to being used in botnets. Or it can even be just your grandma's PC that she never updates because she doesn't use it, right? It can be anything like that. Anything that's uh, internet connected and turned on can be part of a botnet if it's infected. And a lot of the time, the victims don't even know about it because it's not being used most of the time. Now let's talk about some types of attacks. Um, there are three main categories that attack different spots in the um, in the process, right? So you've got an application layer, uh, protocol, and volumetric. We'll go through each of those real quick. So uh, this is just one example, but an application layer attack usually attacks, or it attacks the application itself, right? So the facebook.com, right? That would attack, you're attacking the application that's serving that website. And, um, one of these attacks is called an HTTP flood, and um, you kind of kind of think of it like um, just doing refreshing your page thousands and thousands and thousands of times on a website, trying to slow that website down, and doing it across thousands of computers. Right? Um, that's one way that you can kind of think about it. But uh, if you know computers a little bit better, it's you just send an any of the HTTP requests, um, you know, you could just do a GET request or anything like that. Uh, what the idea is, you're overwhelming that server so it cannot get responses out, or it, it's just so overwhelmed that it can't process the response. Now, one way that this sometimes is done is through, uh, if you're loading a page that has to run a database query, that can be very computationally expensive. And that's one way to, that's that's one of the things that makes this a fairly popular type of attack is an HTTP request on a, a client computer 
or you know the end user's device it's very cheap to send it doesn't cost your computer almost any computational time it's very easy it doesn't take a lot of bandwidth to send one but if you're loading a pretty complex page that's got you know multiple megabytes of a library or something like that or it's a pretty big page that has to do database queries or run some complicated back-end script that can be very computationally expensive for the server which means if you do it thousands and thousands and thousands of times or even millions of times it can overload that server to where it cannot process anymore and crash it basically the idea use all of the available resources to prevent somebody from to prevent the legitimate users from getting their responses back and you know this seems like a pretty simple one. Uh, it can range from simple to complex, depending on a lot of different factors that we won't be getting into in this video, but maybe a future one. Uh, is uh, protocol attacks. So a protocol attack is basically abusing networking protocol. That's that's the first start of first part of this. So uh, in the application layer attack. We're attacking the application itself, the part that's trying to do all the processing. In this attack, we're targeting the uh, protocol itself, the networking protocol. It's a different uh, layer in the layer seven layer model, or in the OSI model. So for protocol, um, one of the major ones that you see is it called a SIN flood. And if you don't know what the TCP handshake is, Essentially, it's a three-step handshake, right? So on the client computer, I call the server. I say I send a SYN packet saying I want to synchronize. They send back a, syn a SYN ACK packet, which is a synchronized acknowledge saying, OK, let's synchronize. And then I send back a final acknowledgement packet saying, OK, I got your last message. And that's the three steps of TCP handshake. Um, essentially, the idea for this attack is we're abusing that TCP handshake because we don't let it be com we don't let it get completed. So, one thing you can note is when you send that SYN packet to the server and the server says, "Okay, I want to respond," it sends back the SYN ACK. It opens up a port for you because now it's listening. It open yeah, it opens up like a port and resources for you because now it's listening for your response back because it wants to be able to so you can communicate back and forth. Assuming you're a legitimate user, right? So if you're legitimate, you know, you send the SYN pack, it opens up the resources for you, uh, listens for the acknowledgement, or it sends back the SYN, the SYN ACK, and then you send back your final acknowledgement, and now it's ready. You guys can communicate. The resources are opened up. You're, lib you're able to send the data back and forth that you need to send. Uh, this abuses it in that it never responds to the SYN ACK packet. So the server has opened up the resources and reserved those for you to talk back and forth with it. However, you're not there. You didn't. You never acknowledged it. And eventually it will time out and free up the resources for the next request down the line. Uh, what this does, kind of like an HTTP flood, is it just sends so many requests that the server doesn't have the resources to keep up. Right, so uh, essentially you're sending, you know, a bunch of SYN packets to the server over time, and you, you there's a couple different methods that are used. Uh, sometimes you just, you have some code or prevent your computer from responding to those acknowledge the SYN ACK packets. Uh, or it's done with spoofing your IP address, so it sends back that SYN ACK packet to somebody else, and that other computer that it sends it to isn't going to respond because it's not expecting it. Meaning that the tar uh, the victim server now has a bunch of resources hanging out, not being used, but it thinks they're about to be used, so it's keeping them reserved. Um, so yeah, basically it opens a port, and if you don't respond, the port stays open for X amount of time. It's different for everything. But it's open for X amount of time, and the goal kind of is to take up all the available ports and uh, all the available resources in the system, so that way it can't, it won't be able to respond to a uh, legitimate user trying to get in.
Now, another way to think of it is kind of like, let's just say you're, uh, you work in the warehouse or something from a store, right? And you're sitting back there, and the front sends you, okay, we've got a request. Go pick up uh, this package and wait for my acknowledgement to bring it to the front to confirm, or wait for my confirmation to bring it up front. And then, you know, it just keeps sending more and more of those requests to go pick up packages and wait for a confirmation. And eventually, the ba the worker back there, or the server, can't hold any more packages. It's got too much. And it can't, can't respond to legitimate requests to go get the package. So that was a, that's a sin flood, and that's a good example of a protocol attack, where we're attacking the networking protocol. Um, the third main category is called a volumetric attack. And the goal here is to consume all the available bandwidth that the server has. So in the first one, what we wanted to do was overload the equipment so it can't respond to requests, or we're overloading the, uh, the processing power and such of the, the server to where it can't respond to uh, legitimate traffic. Uh, the goal of the protocol attack was to take up all the ports on it so it can't respond to traffic. The goal of this one, we just don't want it to get anything at all. The goal here is to use all the available bandwidth so that way nobody can even get through to it because it just does not have the bandwidth to either respond or view or get the requests. Uh, one example of this is uh, DNS amplification. And basically, uh, this abuses a type of DNS called, or DNS server called uh, DNS resolver. Uh, what a resolver does, a little bit comp complicated, not a scope for this, but basically it goes and sends requests on your behalf, gets information back, and gives it back to you. Um, and what they'll do, what attackers and hackers will do with this, is they will take that, abuse the ones that are open when they shouldn't be through uh, exploits or whatever. They'll abuse it, they'll write the request to that DNS resolver in a way that requires a much larger response back than they sent to it. So, you know, you send a request to it, and it's going to respond back with much more, a much larger uh, amount of data than you asked for, or than you sent to it. So with this, what they'll do is, again, spoofed IP addresses. That's a pretty common theme here, you'll see. Um, you can. It's often that you'll spoof an IP address, and what they do is they send out a bunch of requests to these DNS resolving servers, any ones they can find that are open, and they'll spoof their IP address to be the fake, to be the victim's IP address, uh, the server's IP address. And because it's sending back much more data than you sent to it, it's uh, relatively, well, relatively speaking, little traffic is needed to conduct this type of attack because you're amplifying it to a much larger degree. And the goal with it is your botnet or your computer may not have enough bandwidth to outpace the server, right? Let's well, say the server's got a gigabit connection and you've only got 10 up, 10 down for some reason. Or 100 up, 100 down, whatever. Say the server's got a gigabit connection. Smaller server. Uh, the idea is you wouldn't be able to overload it with your botnet because it's only got 100 megabits a second. Uh, the idea is you use your botnet to use a much larger unwilling or accidental attack. <laughs> you use it to the DNS resolvers. They amplify it to get the much larger amount of data that you're asked that you asked for, and it sends it to who it thinks is you, which is the server, uh, the victim server. And with that, it overloads the. Um, it uses all that available bandwidth, so now that victim server just cannot respond to what it wants to, or it can't respond to anything, because it's all that bandwidth is being taken up by the data coming in. And it can't receive the new requests that you want, or that uh, legitimate users send to it. Effectively denying service to anyone trying to use it.
and that's you know that's one of the three main types of uh, attacks along with a couple examples there and as you yeah you know, as you saw most of this involves IP spoofing or botnets or a combination of the two um, with that being said thanks for watching please remember to like and subscribe